Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at this wooden puzzle called Astrolabrium. Now before I get to that, I want to thank you all for coming to this channel and checking it out. This is my very first video on this channel, and uh, I'm going to be posting all sorts of different types of puzzles on here, anything from wooden to metal puzzles, locks, all sorts of different stuff. I want to try to get a big wide variety of different types of puzzles on here, and we're going to start with this one. Now, the designer of this one's name is Jürgen Reich. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, and it was produced by Sebastian Spiel. I believe I'm pronouncing that right. So, given that, on this channel, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be mispronouncing some names of some things, because uh, a lot of them are from countries that I, I'm not used to their dialect. So, I apologize in advance for that. But this puzzle here is really nice. When I saw this one, I was like... I want to really try that because the whole point of this is to cover these whiter dots with the darker dots so you can move them around and it's got four different layers so it actually consists of six layers altogether or eight if you really want to be picky because this one here sticks out a little bit from the acrylic and the acrylic sticks out from these four inner layers which is what we actually maneuver and then on this side we have another one and the acrylic but I look at it as a four layered puzzle because you have four of these to move around so the whole point like I said cover all the white the white dots with the dark dots so as you can see right now we've got one two three so I want to move some stuff but as you can see if I if I want to move this dot to cover that one it reveals another one right here and so every time that you want to maybe hide one so let's see if we can hide something well it reveals more so with these four layers, you really have to kind of play around and see exactly, um, figure out a strategy in a sense. So on this side here, uh, it's all lighter colored wood and you can see all the white dots here. Now you can really see them moving around each other as we go like this. Right here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then if you move it like this, now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then you move it a little bit more. And now you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And the same thing happens on this side. So you can increase or decrease the amount of dots there are. And I believe this is made from uh, laser cut wood. So it's lasered in there and then the actual cuts are laser cut. And that's how they get it so nice. Now I believe that these dots that are on the outside, uh, these are just there to hold this inside in. I do not believe that they are part of the puzzle. I think it's just these inner dots that we are working with. I've played with this, I have solved this thing, I have tried many, many times to get all of the dots, the outside and the inside ones, to be just dark, and I don't think it's possible. So I think that's just there for, um, you know, just to look good, and these are what you're actually working with. I've also tried to cover up all dark dots with white dots, and I haven't been able to do that. So this is a very high quality puzzle. The wood is very, very nice. I haven't noticed any flaws in it whatsoever. The word astrolabrium, I think, is laser etched in there, and so is everything else around the front and back panel of this thing. It's got an acrylic layer as well, and it's almost got like a degrees dial on it, but I haven't been able to figure out what the point of that is because you can actually move it around. If it was fixed, then you would be able to remember exactly what degree uh, one of the layers is at for solving it so you can just show the solution really easily but this moves around quite a bit maybe if you had memorized where the first one is and then put that to the zero point so the zero point is set there then you could move the other ones around in relation to all of this another thing that i've noticed about this as well is the top side has complete holes in here and then when you look at the other side uh, they're only half holes they're sort of a different shape I'm, I'm not sure exactly why that is. I think it might be that if you're trying to memorize the solution and you're using the degrees dial on the acrylic, you, uh, you might have an easier, faster time setting that up if you know which side is which. So for all of the videos that I'm going to be showing on this channel, I will be showing the solution as well. But if you are interested in getting this, I highly recommend you do not watch the solution because you can't unsee it after that. You will understand it. And it's not just the solution, it's the strategy that gets you to the solution. If you don't memorize how this looks, you'll still remember the strategy. So I'm going to go ahead and show you my strategy and how I solve this now. And if you do not uh, want to see that, um, then don't continue watching. Uh, for future videos, I will be providing links and stuff so you can navigate yourself through my videos 
uh, to skip solutions, get right to the end, my final thoughts, without having to watch that part and, uh, and still have an entertaining video to watch. So let's go on with the solution. Now the whole goal of this is to cover up the white dots with the dark dots. And there's two layers of dark dots and there's two layers of white dots. So my thinking is, how am I going to cover up all of those with these? I mean, I could like, you know, set these like this and then I can, you know, move, move them a little bit, you know, like this or something. And then, you know, move them in pairs and, and try to cover up those white dots. But it's uh, not that easy. I tried and I tried and I tried until I realized we're trying to cover the white dots with dark dots. So these can be moved around each other, as you can see. And like I showed before, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And as you move them again, now there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So let's just keep moving until we find one with the least amount of dots because they will cover each other. So this is three, six, 10, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we just keep going until we find one like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But let's keep going. Seeing if there's less, that's not less, that's not less, that's not less. And we will just continue this until we see if there's one that has less. This one has eight. So I'm guessing it was the seven one. So let's just go back and find the seven one, which is right here. So now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now I want to flip it over and I want the most, the most dark dots to be available. Now one thing I do find about this puzzle is when you're starting to move this, see I've already lined this side up, right? But when you go over here and you start to move, say this one here, other, other layers, like now I'm unlining these two. So it is a bit of a grip challenge as well. And the way I find it is to just grip it by the sides and then I can spin this around. And uh, right here, I see I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, focus, nine, ten. So I want to keep going until I, I, I can see that it's got a lot. So that's ten. Let's just keep going. This one, look at this one. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And look at this huge spread that can cover a lot. Now I want to move these in pairs because I don't want the darks mixing anymore and I don't want the lights mixing anymore either. So I'm going to kind of hold it and move them in pairs. And I'm going to do that until everything is covered. See, this has already started. Look at this. We've got everything except for one. And we just keep this process, everything except for two, until we found that we have covered everything, if that's the solution. So everything except for one again. Everything except for two. Everything except for one. Sorry, for two. And now we have everything except for one again. <laughs> I actually, I thought I had it that time. And now we have covered every single white piece with the dark piece. So to me, that's the solution. Everything is covered. So before I figured out my method on this puzzle, I fiddled around with it for a while by, you know, just trying to cover things and then it would uncover more and then be like, oh, okay, let's try to cover that. But then it would uncover more. And it was really trial and error until I realized, hey, let's come up with a strategy and see how that works. And then it did work out for me, obviously. And when I got it, I was actually super happy. I was like, I conquered you puzzle. Um, very, I've never done a puzzle like this. That's why it was so exciting to me that I was able to solve it. Uh, links at the top of the description to this. Check it out. Now, I'm going to be honest with you guys. It is an affiliate link, meaning that I do get a percentage of the sales if there is any. But it's mostly for tracking to see what kind of activity I'm bringing to the website. Affiliates don't really make a ton of money from this. And any money I ever do make from this channel... Uh, I will be putting back into this channel for bigger, more expensive, better products to show you guys. Um, but yeah, it's really just mostly for tracking so the company can see exactly what is coming in from this channel. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks to PuzzleMaster.ca for sending me this stuff and sponsoring this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on my next video.